Welcome back, everyone, to the second week of Season 9. Here we are, and what a stacked weekend it is. We have Eternal and Zero Practice playing today. Two teams on the absolute highest skill level. Afterwards, Elysium and Trauma, pure legends clashing together. And then the American Showdown, Cynic versus Tremor, early on in Season 9, testing already who is going to come up as the top American team. And for that, you need very amazing casters and we have one very amazing caster making the return today rayoxium welcome back hi oh, you're so nice dire it's really great uh it's really great to be back i'm excited to cast these matches today eternal versus zero prac it's going to be extremely exciting matchups we have some good killers today i'm very excited i hope we go to tiebreaker it's one of my favorite killers to cast so dire what do you think about the matches today how are they gonna go are you excited for one of them Absolutely. My favorite set will be the first one, the Blight, because Eternal and Zero Practice, you mentioned it, it will be an exciting match. It will be a match that is going to be very speedy. Decisions have to be made very quickly. The early game will be very important because if you play in Season 9 as one of the top 10 teams, you really want to take the control over your opponent as early as possible in the trial. And the Blight is a killer that offers you that. You can quickly catch up to a survivor. You can quickly down on a survivor. On the other hand, if the survivors manage to stay alive and take a little bit of a chase, that is almost a catastrophe on the Blight. On a Demogorgon, we say, okay, you get run for two gens, nothing special. We see it quite some time. This is the expected mind games. But on Blight, every chase matters so much. And there's so much uh, pressure on the killer player for me. So I feel like Blight is the perfect opener for this best of three. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Blight matches, they go extremely, extremely fast. Very, very high skill cap killer. We did see the hug tech removed, so we'll get to see how Blight plays in very high level teams. I'm pretty excited to see. Like you said, every chase matters. It could go south extremely, extremely fast, or, you know, the first down could happen within the first minute of the game. That's just how Blight games go. The, because this killer also is a high-level killer, we get to see more perks the survivors get to have. We get to see stronger perks. We get to see more exhaustions. We get to see more recovery perks. I'm really excited to see how this first set will go, especially because we have a turno versus uh, zero prac. Both teams that are extremely good, and we'll get to see uh, who comes out on top. Yeah, and this is the exciting thing because now talking about the top here, second one is the Dredge. And I honestly thought from the past that Eternal and Dredge is something that goes hand in hand because Bobozavre is on the team. We have seen Babo playing the Dredge multiple times, so dominant and so great, but Babo has left Eternal. He is now on Ariando. He's the team captain. So when seeing that Eternal is picking the Dredge, I was quite surprised. I do think they still have a lot of practice and a lot of experience as and against this killer because Babo was practicing it so often. But honestly, to my knowledge, I am not exactly sure who will play play the Dredge on Team Eternal, if it will be Zaka or Nightlight here. So it was honestly a surprise for me. It was the pick of um, it was the pick of Zero Practice, maybe a niche killer for Eternal to throw them off. What, have you seen Eternal play the Dredge recently or any any experience with Eternal and, and Dredge so far? Actually, I, I really haven't, but it's an indoor set, and we have seen Eternal play a lot of indoor sets. We can see how organized they can be, which is definitely the priority number one for indoor sets. So, personally, I'm not scared for them, because we've seen how great and organized they can be on their survivor side. I think what we're really going to look for is how their killer is going to be playing it, because like you said, Bobo Bubbo has left Eternal, so whoever is going to be taking his place is probably going to be, you know, working for it, especially because Zero Prac did pick this killer. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. I love indoor sets, especially because we also have another indoor set, possibly for Tiebreaker. 
And this is your favorite one, Ray. I know that you're waking for the tiebreaker, the ghost face. And ghost face is such an intense killer, especially for the tiebreaker, because ghost face is one of these killers where you don't really want to have any sort of mistake and it can happen very easily. You're looking one time into the wrong direction, bam, ghost face coming around the corner. You have been stalked 99, you're getting pulled away. We remember this great clip that is going around in the community of Roy crouching again. Uh, behind the barrel and not noticing the ghost face at all stuff like this can happen hopefully it doesn't happen sorry roy for taking you as an example here um, <laughs> but we have to point out on the roster of zero practice there is tree trick an absolute experienced person when it comes to ghost face on the other hand of team eternal we do have Zaka, an absolutely experienced M1 killer who played the ghost phase a ton of times. So if there's any showdown possible in this best of three, then it's definitely the ghost phase. Roy, though, to hype up the tiebreaker set, what do you love so much about a ghost phase set? All right. Well, I I really do love Ghostface sets. I love indoor sets, especially. Ghostface himself is not a very strong killer. He has a lot of bans against him in terms of perks for survivors. You know, you see just like a lot of really random perks that you wouldn't normally even see in public games just because he's such a low tier killer meaning that survivors if they want to win this set they have to be super hyper organized a set like this really shows the skills of teams the better team will absolutely come out on top especially because of the way the map rng works on indoor maps a lot of them are very very static i would say you can expect a lot of stuff to spawn of course there is a little bit of rng factor especially with generator spawns you know maybe a forge and spawns at top but of course the killer himself is not very strong so he can be taken on a two three generator chase especially in the very beginning where there is a lot of safe pallets that can spawn and i love watching them because you can really do damage as the ghost face you are trying to create chaos you're trying to create discord in the team's communications and it's very very exciting to see what killers can do and we have seen those matches killers are extremely capable in creating discourse amongst these high level teams it's very exciting to watch i love seeing the organization between the survivors their communication where's the ghost face we don't know nobody put yourself in a compromising position get to safe pallets where's the reset it's going to be over here by this safe pallet it's extremely fun to see these games can take a long time they can just be played very slow they can be played very fast we'll have to see ghost face sets they are not extremely uh i would say they're not consistent. They can have a lot of differences between each game, and I love watching them, and I love casting them, and I'm really excited to be casting here today for them. That was one hell of a ghost face fan telling <laughs> us what's great about I was listening, I was like... Yeah, that's true. And that's a great idea as well. I was honestly not looking so positively on Ghostface yet. <laughs> but now after this very, very speech in flames, I definitely do. Ladies and gentlemen, the people in the background are getting ready. Players are standing in the lobby. We will quickly take a short break, setting everything up. One comment, though, you will notice there are the standings still not updated. This is because we run into a few technical difficulties when it comes to the integration of challenge into our data and also because the staff members that are responsible are still uh, facing a sickness. So uh, bear with us. We're trying to get it done for tomorrow. Um, a big apology from us. Therefore, we will send us on a break and we will show you Eternal facing zero practice in the first set of today in a moment. Hello everybody and welcome to our first matchup of the day! We have Eternal vs. Zero Prac, which of course you can already tell because we have Nightlight on the Blight! And we're already in a chase super super early! And we're already seeing the effects of the Hug Tech being gone! Blight now has a bigger hitbox and we're already chasing Good Khan over here! Dire, uh, how do you think this match is gonna go? 
Yeah, Nightlight definitely has a plan here because we are just going into this stream and immediately we have the first chase. Absolutely insane. What we are seeing, he is looking around. He has another generator behind him here and that's going to be the sh uh, shark pilot being dropped as well. We are in the corrupt uh, area here. A few generators down here. A little bit of an area you can defend later on. Unfortunately, though, the active generators will be under pressure very early, but this is going to look like the good old comp corner and that's going to be good Khan going down very early into the game that's going to be punished whatsoever two survivors working on a generator towards the top side doubling up here they have a lot of progress and I don't think there's any way that nightlight will stop that so the first objective in exchange for the first hook stage usually a very good sign for a very efficient survivor team oh goodness I think we also have a bugged out blight we won't be seeing him dashing around the map but we know that he is not actually face camping that is just a visual bug dead by daily is a little bit buggy right now yeah he's just standing in front of the hook but he's not actually there once he gets uh i think a hit or a down he will be back on our screen but like you said we have so much generator progress that is happening on the opposite side of the map but our first hook is in basement and we are, are on one side of the map suffocation pit is shaped sort of like a bone we've got most of our generators on each side we don't know where the blight is but we do see uh Kirsep, i believe is coming in for the save with deliverance as well so we are able to get that save that early without actually giving a tag but i do believe the blight is around here somewhere and we love what we have seen there in the basement. Sometimes the spectator bug really revealing a new side about the killers here. Good Khan though, running and holding W towards the top side. Nightlight going to try and find a good mix now between pressure onto the survivors and there is it out of nowhere into the back. Nightlight officially exposed as a filthy cheater here. That's going to be the carry back straight towards the hook stage. Very quick on the second stage though, on the other hand, we have to say very, very impressive what Zero Practice is uh, showing us here. Second generator already in exchange for the second hook stage. Usually the killer is a lot faster on accumulating hook stages than the survivors can keep up with the generators here. So Zero Practice definitely coming in with the game plan, definitely executing this game plan very well as well. Nightlight going back towards the hook here, trying a potential rotation, coming in from any survivor, trying to save good Khan here that's not going to happen so far ladies and gentlemen keep in mind that the anti-camping mechanic is banned so good Khan will not be able to unhook himself in case nightlight is staying around that's going to be a punishment for the greeting survivor here and immediately the rotation back we do know it especially on larger maps like suffocation pit you want to cut out one survivor as quick as you can good Khan is the optimal goal and honestly um, Ray, this target better has a good chase here. Mm -hmm. That's what we're counting on, especially because this first chase survivor was not the decisive strike survivor and exactly what we needed. Nightlight gets the down. We do have decisive strikes still out there. Oh my gosh, they have so much generator progress already though. And also, this first survivor did have sprint burst, which usually means that they could have uh, deliverance but that is not the case we see zero crack mixing up with the builds a little bit not going with the expected meta maybe nightlight doesn't know that there is possibly a deliverance out there because that was the first hook but we know for a fact that it is on adam who is our overcome survivor so that could potentially lead to some really good plays in end game from zero crack We'd love to see a little bit of variety. Now we are just going for some regular chases. We were able to get that tunnel out. It does have one generator left, meaning that the gen the survivors could possibly bang this out. The map is also very wonderfully split. We have a generator on each side. Ruin is still up as well. Ruin can be good or bad for the Blight, depending on how you see it, because we do have some regression happening, yes, but... We are not able to use one of our Sodom perks, which is Pop Goes the Weasel. Scourge Hook of a Pain Resonance is, of course, banned for an S-tier killer, so we won't be seeing any of that. And now we're out here just chasing this Adam, a wonderful hit through the pallet! I bet Adam is not feeling too good about that, especially now because he's practically zoned. He did have Overcome, but did not get a lot of distance. 
and there will be the down. Our deliverance survivor though, so once he gets hooked, that means that he is able to get off the hook by himself. Nightlight might not be expecting that. Absolutely, and I do think the plan was very differently. You touched on Hex, Ruin, and Pop Goes the Weasel being brought together here. And yeah, Ruin does some regression for you, but I do feel like you need a lot more pressure on multiple survivors to really make Ruin shine here. And also, the regression is significantly worse than it was in the past. So usually you're expecting that the Hex Totem will be removed throughout the trial, and then in the back pocket you have this Pop Goes to Weasel. The fact that Zero Practice is potentially intentionally keeping up the Ruin, because it was right there where we have seen multiple hook stages, there's no uh, no way that they are not aware of the Hex Totem here, um, is potentially a gamble the survivors are going to take, because they realize that their efficiency and their control on the suffocation pit is currently higher than what Nightlight is going to put in with Hex Ruin and his pressure here. So we can only hope for zero practice that this gamble will turn out in a good way and that they will be more efficient than the Hex Totem can provide as regression here. But so far, it really does look like that. However, Ace is now going to receive attack as well. And this Ooh, is turning it a it? little bit, especially if this for the oh, it and the answer is no, this might be a very, very painful turn against zero practice here. We have Sai Aura close to death. We have one survivor laying on the floor. We have Kurzip as an injured survivor. And out of nowhere, we might not talk about an endgame anymore. It might all have fallen apart into mm -hmm. a 4K. Very wonderfully played by Nightlight, able to put these survivors in a spot where they are possibly going to get 4k one here that person on the hook does die and we have one slug and of course because adam was the deliverance survivor he couldn't have healed up in that time so he is still injured we know that he was over here working on this generator so nightlight very knowledgeable about where the survivors will likely be moving looks around on this side of the map possibly trying to find a stealthing adam who we know is actually in a very interesting interesting spot just hiding behind this rock and he does get the heal from that mid kit he was carrying so he is not dead just yet but we have used our deliverance he is the one with the unbreakable so we know that it's not going to be in play from the ace that is currently slugged the survivors are probably going to try to bang out one more generator but the hex ruin a famously good end game perk you know it survived the trial up until now so even if they are able to pick up get a reset going they still have to deal with that if Nightlight is able to just pressure the generators on the very, very far sides of the map. And Blight is also a very good killer, so his chases can be incredibly fast. The survivors may instead have been choosing to opt for maybe just trying to get somebody out through the hatch, getting somebody out through the gate. I'm not sure where the gate spawns are. We know it's right here next to Adam. If it is on the other side of the map, there could be a chance that we do see somebody get out through the gate or the hatch, which does matter in the case of a tie. And of course, Blight games on Suffocation Pit, I would say expected result from a good Blight would be a 4k1. Absolutely, it's completely falling into what we are usually expecting. Unfortunately, I feel like that zero practice was very close of breaking this typical expectation. And now seeing that this one very, very risky play where they try to go for the unhook, but they're coming too late and giving Nightlight the chance, um, giving Nightlight the chance to take the down there. That is potentially turning it into these very expected results. And as I said, Zero Practice looked like they had a clear game plan. They came out very efficient. They smashed one generator per hook stage. An absolute impressive start here on the suffocation pit. And then it can be one decision sometimes and it's all falling apart. However, kills up here with a very nice stun will find a little bit of distance here towards his teammate, but I don't think that's going to be enough. We would need a little bit more in terms of looping here in order to make it back towards the I hope that's the down right here. Therefore, it's confirmed one generator standing 4K right here. I mean, that is a very doable win condition for zero practice, but it will be hard, that's for sure. Yep, yep, yep. And we know that this was Eternal's pick. So a 4K one, I say, is a pretty good and respectable result, especially coming from like a killer that is obviously not going to be your pick. We'll have to see what Zero Prac has in their back pocket playing against Team Eternal Survivors.
Welcome back everyone to the suffocation pit. It's now a tree trick for zero practice on the killer side and the win condition is quite difficult against Eternal here. You have to 4k with two gens remaining. One gen remaining would be a tie and if they are getting all generators done we would see Eternal taking the set point here. This is always a very very good win condition for the survivor team. You don't need to worry about anyone walking out of the door therefore you can double, triple, quadruple the final generator and just take a couple of downs and smash through a tree trick. Is also not really lucky in finding the first chase here. Remember Nightlight we quickly switched into the stream and immediately had the chase music and here Eternal pulling an old tech from 2019 hiding out corrupt intervention at least a little bit but now Spitz is being found here in the meanwhile though a hex totem is leaving the trial as well Spitz moving quickly towards the shack a very valuable resource therefore tree trick it seems like not even bothering taking the first chase instead there will be Ivan now taking the first chase but unfortunately he makes it into the shack as well Ray this doesn't look like a good early game for tree trick at all Mm -mm, not of course because we did have our first chase last pretty quickly last game and we can see eternal playing very very so like you said their win con is a lot easier to work with they just need to pop five generators and we already had one of our perks on blight cleansed and the survivors didn't really they haven't really given too much there's still a lot of resources up we did see shack pellet throne not broken and we do see one perk that we haven't seen in a very long time on the left there call of brine meaning that when we kick a generator it regresses at i believe 125 percent i might be wrong i think that's what it is but it also glows yellow and tells us when a survivor gets a skill check done on it so it's a little bit more regression and also some information what we didn't see from nightlight was actually an information perk we didn't see any value out of pop goes a weasel either but now that hexeron has been cleansed this game we might be able to see some of that we do have dan here zoned into a corner this might be our first down we didn't even get a down before corruption invention ran out but also Oh, yep, there goes the first generator done. The first generator does get done. It was doubled. We see the survivors walking away. Do they have very much generator progress on the others? We might... <laughs> We've got Yuichi here uh, setting up for the pull, I believe. He is the deliverance survivor. We do have David stealthing on the side. So even though the start might not have been as good as Nightlights, the survivors don't actually have very much generator progress compared to Zero Crack last game. But of course, the beginning can be good it can be bad what really happens is the meat of the game it's the middle parts we know that tree trick here is looking for the deliverance survivor that is already being set up however we do know that he was able to slip by and get the pole before anything too crazy happened we're just gonna go for the tag on dan putting into deep wounds not even caring about any of this does dan go down this early though no, he does not. He throws this pallet, but he is kind of zoned. This is Blight, the killer. He's incredibly fast. Ooh, Ooh, do we know if Dan has to slice a strike either? Is he trying to go down to get value out of that perk? We do see Yuichi over here as well, not doing any generators, not even sitting. He did get that pull there, so he is uh, got deliverance up, I believe. Oh, and that is the decisive strike survivor, meaning that Dan will live for just a little bit longer. He does have live as well, so he might be able to get a lot of distance. And Yuichi is here to try to take a body block hit to make him live for just that much longer. And this is what makes Eternal Games so beautiful because oh! everything looks like a planned unit on the team side. Unfortunately, this one did not work out. They do lose a little bit of time here and they did lose a little bit of time in the early game. However, considering the fact they got the Hex Totem, they got a very nice setup across the generators. They are now taking the value from it later on in the mid game. You, uh, you told us about it, the mid game being so important and here we see the great value out of Eternal's coordination. Three generators have been completed just in exchange for two hook stages. So now they're even outrunning the Blight in terms of getting the objectives done here. We remember the win condition Tree Trick would need to 4k right here, right now in order to take the set point. One more generator would be the tie, but even one more generator and then a 4k will be really, really difficult with 10 hook stages to go. So Eternal in an absolute perfect position here. We also see the beautiful split right here. Two generators on 
the top side, one at the main building, one at the left side next to the hook, but two generators. Impossible to defense at the moment. And I'm very, very unsure if Tree Trick has the time. His gamble at the moment is he will camp out then, force the three we won, and then go to the generators on the bottom side. But Ray, he might not even have enough time. And he's also not able to go down here. That's not what the plan was. And this is looking worse and worse for Tree Trick here. He needs to Uxaka, he needs to get down, but even then, Spitz and Ivan are repairing gens on the bottom side. Mm hmm and of course, like you said, the map is perfectly split, two on two on each side, so these survivors, they're just happily working on generators. Well, Zaka and Dan over here, they're just messing around, they're just wasting time. They've got all these perks, they've got everything, the Blight, Strong Killer, but it's not gonna be enough. They're doubling the last generator. We are in tying territory. However, these two survivors, if they just sit right here, they are able to secure the win. They are stealthing away, however, because Tree Trick knows what his win condition is. He knows exactly what the survivors are planning. He's gonna come over here. He still has a Pop Goes a Weasel charge from when he hurt, uh, hooked Zaka on the other side. Will be applying Call of Brine, but this comes at a high cost. He spent the majority of this game trying to get Dan out to make it a 3v1. However, he gets away and he is healed up. That means there are four survivors. There's four gens. Honestly, they could just all split. Everybody work on a different generator. Just have a really good chase. That means we win this set. This set that we have expertly picked. True Trick is doing a very good job. But like I said, there are four survivors in the trial right now. And all they need to do is just split up on gens and try to get it. We do see here, we have Dan and we also have Zaka who is injured. This is our tunnel out right here. If we can get a very, very quick chase that will put us in a better position. However, we need to herd every single other survivor on, in the game, even though we are a high tier killer. Yeah, we see over there, Call of Brian is giving us the information that probably Spitz and Ivan are working on that generator once again. And here we see now the very, very intense chase. We do need a down. We need two downs. We need injuries on the other survivors. And all of that is running against the clock here because we do need a 4K just for the tiebreaker here. Will Tree Trick be able? The answer is no, Eternal. Smashing through it with just three hook stages. And this is not only important for the first set. They will not only taking the first set point here they are taking it with such dominance only handing out three stages before going into the end game is a clear sign and zero practice will stay on the killer side and very likely it will be tree trick playing the dredge in the upcoming game and when eternal was just so dominant and so powerful and you're going into the next killer game this is really doing something with your mentality here however spitz is now being found as well so tree trick making some sort of an end game comeback here they're taking care of each other already here ivan coming around Zaka witnessing the chase with dan the man here next to the pallet as well it gets a little bit chaotic but eternal doesn't need to worry anymore they can try to get as many stages out of the door but the set point is already secured here. Talking about the dredge in the upcoming game, we have the Midwich Elementary School, as we mentioned earlier. Zero practice picked the dredge. Zero practice usually being quite good as and against this killer, but against an Eternal that is coming out really coordinated and really organized. It's a whole different story mm -hmm. and Spitz showing us what we mean with Eternal's dominance here. Just casually bringing out a very, very intense dodge, being able to make it to the exit door. The same goes for Zaka taking the hit intentionally here and then using the speed boost to go towards the exit gates as well. That looks like a four man out here by Eternal just for stages. Absolutely insane performance here. And this is something that will put Eternal in the winner shoes and riding a wave of enthusiasm into set number two, Midwich Elementary School, the dredge on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll show you that set right after a short break. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our second matchup of Zero Prac versus Eternal. We have now taken a moment. We have switched to Zero Prac taking the lead on this killer set, Dredge on the Midwitch. And we can already see we are in chase because we have a purple add-on, which is Boat Key. I believe that means that we start the trial 
Maybe I'm incorrect, actually. Never mind. It's a good add-on. I know that for sure. It's usually banned in some places, but unbanned in some, which is right here. We are taking the chases to all of these safe pallets, which is not giving the dredge the hit very, very early, which we know hits on dredge make the nightfall speed up. So we want to delay those first hits as like as much as possible. You treat these sets kind of like Oni sets. You don't want to give out the free hits. And we do see Nightlight with the good pathing here, taking the chases into some corrupted gen areas. We know with Midwitch, it's a little bit difficult to actually do that because the map spread is very interesting. So we do have some progress happening here in the middle of the map. We actually have two generators spawning in the middle. I've not really ever seen that. So we're going to chase Zaka instead. And we also have a little bit of a traffic jam. We have Dan over here as well. They're struggling to try to get some generator progress done without giving tags to the killer. Will we see some hits happening here? No, we do not. And like uh, Dyer said very, very early to me that Zero Prac is usually very good on indoor map sets so we're gonna have to see how eternal plays this out against the dredge baits the swing goes for it doesn't hit it hits the locker instead dire what are you thinking is gonna happen this match i honestly don't know because i am expecting so much i would not be surprised if tree trick is taking this over in just a couple of seconds here and putting injuries everywhere on the other hand after seeing set number one i also wouldn't be surprised if eternal is absolutely going nuts here smashing out the gents not even allowing an injury so honestly the spread of possibilities couldn't be wider here and tree trick is now getting an injury onto nightlight here but we have been in this game game for quite some time. Eternal definitely had the time to spread out across the generators. We can tell there's a little bit of progress over here. They have been working on quite some generators in the upper hallway. Royalty over here coming up as well. So they have a good spread. They have a good awareness what's going on as well. Royalty leaving the area early, expecting the dredge to come from the correct side here, going to get into the chase with enough distance to reach this pallet over here. Does have the patience though as well not even wasting this resource immediately instead going for a very very nice mind game but will eventually come out punished here and taking the injury the other injury is already healed so we cannot even say that tree trick is starting to take a little bit of pressure over the survivors here honestly it reminds me a little bit of set number one it looks very tricky Mm -hmm. We do have some injuries that are coming through. Nightfall getting activated. And like you said, that first, like the first generator getting done took a very long time. We have been going around the map. A lot of resources have been getting drained. We do have a couple of safe pallets still left because this in is Midwitch, but we are breaking through. We are making this map a lot less safe for the survivors. We are trying to get another down. We are playing it very, very slow. We do have that one generator done that was, I believe, in the middle of the map. So that makes it so the last generators that are left are ones that are in safer spots. We do finally get our first down onto royalty here. That will speed up the match. We don't have Scourge Hook Pain Resonance because it is banned for the dredge. You know, I don't ever take... Personally, I don't take Pain Resonance into a dredge map anyway because Midwitch is very, very RNG and it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to get to a Scourge Hook. So we do have Pop Goes a Weasel and Eruption available to us. So we're going to try to possibly apply to a generator, except he's not finding a generator with enough progress to actually place it upon. Do we have one right here? Yes, we do. Let's slap it right on here, and we do have somebody who is getting chased. Now, in a dredge set, he is a lower tier killer, meaning that we don't have as many perks as we would, like, in the blight set before us. We don't really have decisive strike. We don't have deliverance. So we'll have to see some organization from the survivors, getting that survivor out of there, not letting him get tunneled just as easily. We don't have the time to waste. A tree trick is just teleporting around the map. He is making it so he is pressuring all the survivors at once gonna give a tag to Adam right here and go after our tunnel out. 
And that's going to be a very important chase right here. Royalty will need to be downed as soon as possible. We need, uh, we need to get the hook stages in here to progress the game towards three survivors remaining. That's going to be a difficult task though because Royalty is very confident when it comes to these mind games. We do see a very wonderful stun here even on the pallet, taking a lot of distance, moving around here, making the loop a little bit wider. Tree Trick is trying to counter that with the power. Royalty he trying to mind game it it's going to work once it's going to work twice and now he might even reach the oh wind my gosh, that's it's going to be a catastrophe for zero practice so much distance now for royalty right here with this vault even more and if i wasn't mistaken there's also a teammate slowly rotating to take a hit for royalty is trying to play around this pallet here but just holding w once more into the next pallet that is located right here but now he got a little bit too greedy eventually going to be taken down but ray compared to the potential down at this pallet in the classroom oh, no. to one minute later down in the hallway this was a lot of progress and of course this will find the punishment potentially cutting it down to just one generator remaining here very soon so tree trick once again with a very nice idea we can tell that he has a plan we can tell that there was something he was trying to set up for but eventually it didn't really work out royalty also already saved eternal not losing a single second here and once again he's trying to throw these survivors off by teleporting across the map but they are already aware and that's going to be dan next to royalty as well they don't even worry about taking a hit though because they know that they are having the necessary pressure on the generator swing and with onto zaka here and slowly we do see the switch onto other survivors ray and i do think that's a clear sign tree trick does not plan with the tunnel out any longer he's now trying to get as many stages on as many survivors as possible and i do think considering the current state of the game that is a very good switch mm -hmm. of course we did try to focus on a tunnel out but it did not happen in time meaning that we are switching to another survivor this is possibly a good idea like you said we're trying to get some more health states we are uh, I think True Trick knows that we are possibly going to be making it to endgame. And of course, we do have a secret fourth perk that I'm sure the survivors are trying to scout out as well. We have a little bit of a noed, so that means that the endgame could potentially be a little spicy. Our royalty tunnel out did get away, and we do have some generator progress, not a whole lot. Eternal spent that time to reset all of their survivors, possibly trying to not give any more free downs because we do have perks that are activated by hooks. We have Pop Goes a Weasel and Eruption. So Tree Trick is trying to pressure down all these other survivors, just walks completely right through that pallet and does get a hit right there. We don't have Sloppy Butcher, which is sometimes what we can see in dredge sets. Instead, we are going for a little bit more of slowdowns and in-game perks. So resets can happen fairly quickly. These tags are happening, but of course they're not gonna last too long. We do see Dan over here. He's not our tunnel out. Zaka actually goes to second, putting us at four stages, which is a pretty healthy amount. Ooh, the last generator does get done and it is Nightlight over here. That is a good find. We also have royalty over here as well. Honestly, if we go for Nightlight, that means that we will be having Possibly a three stage. The Noah is up there in the top of the stairwell, which is kind of a dastardly spot. If Night Lake goes down next to it, that could be easier to get to, or sorry, easier to camp. But Night Lake is running away. We hear the door being worked on. We heard it being open. We've got uh, a survivor over here, Dan and Royalty. They might be able to take a hit. Actually, no, no, it's still up. So if they take a hit, they go down. But we are going to try a little bit of a dredge mind game right here. And Night Lake goes down. Even if we just get this one hook, that's another fresh stage. They're possibly looking for a little bit of no -ed. We have to hook far away from it, though, meaning that it could possibly potentially be cleansed. And it is cleansed, meaning that there are three survivors out there who can go for this unhook. We'll have to see what the survivors plan on. Do we see any of them? No, we do not. 
Yeah, this will be a very tough decision. Honestly, knowing Eternal and how dominant they were playing, I do feel like they could take two more stages, bringing it to seven and then deal with that. On the other hand, knowing Eternal, they very, very rarely leave someone behind and they don't really like, especially when a fresh hook is uh, in the end game achieved to, uh, by the killer, they don't really like handing that out. So we do see Tree Trick here defending the hook as best as possible, but it's going to be a difficult task. However, Tree Trick manages to block the survivors at least a little bit. He will take another hit onto them. Three survivors now that are fully injured. Tree Trick teleporting to the next locker here, trying to get closer and closer towards these survivors, but it seems like he lost track of them a little bit. At least we don't see anyone in this room anymore where he has been. We do see that Royalty is already going to heal one of the team members, leaving two of them injured. They are now jumping down, but there is a body block being taken and Ray I do feel like we are going to face four stages walking out of the door here mm -hmm. four stages three fresh and it's very beatable we see a little bit of body blocking we got some friendly fire but that means that is just that many <laughs> stages. It can be a six stage next game. We'll have to see how the Eternal Killer plays this out. I believe it will be Zaka playing for Eternal. I'm not entirely sure, but we will be seeing it in a few minutes when we take the time to switch sides. We're going to put on our builds. Don't go anywhere, everybody. We will be right back. Oh, welcome back everyone and we are going to say sorry for a significantly longer waiting time even though we had server and lobby problems but we always feel like we are responsible for it so we feel really bad and would like to say sorry thank you for waiting and we are here with Zaka and team eternal and he is on a good win condition here just a few hook stages we could say around the seven mark and then we are going to have a very very or not even seven it was less than that because we did see a four minute escape earlier so uh, half time will be enough for eternal here on the stage side to get the second set point and therefore pushing it all the way into a 2-0 and zaka already on the tail of the first survivor here however going cross map checking on the generators here finds two survivors a third one in the courtyard as well i think once again if we compare the two trials that we have seen zaka with a lot more pressure and a lot of awareness in the early game mm -hmm. we are Finding survivors left and right, we know exactly where they are. We are trying to get a tag earlier, putting some survivors in positions where they would get a tag even easier. We have Adam right here. We're trying not to lose this mind game. Zaka possibly getting a tag earlier than the killer was able to last game. Yep, there we go. We got our first tag before the first generator is done, before our corruption invention is gone. We do see that our hex ruin gets cleansed right there, spawning right next to a generator. That's so poor rg but that does happen on midwitch curse up right here able to get a stun on zaka delaying the inevitable but we are chasing him down zaka probably gonna get this down way earlier than last game exactly what we need trying to bait the dredge into using his power right here what are we gonna do zaka incredibly patient goes for the vault and is able to get the tag that is our first down happening at five generators. We have a little bit of progress here by Ace. We have a little bit of progress here by Tap in the middle of the map. And we got, you know, a survivor being carried to the hook that will... We don't actually have Pop Goes a Weasel on Dredge. Now that I'm seeing it, we have Corruption Invention, Sloppy Butcher, Hex Room, which was cleansed, and now we have Eruption. So we don't have a Pop Charge to go around applying. We do have a little bit of Eruption. First Generator gets done. We have a lot of progress on this one here in the middle. However, we do have that first hook coming out very soon. That's going to expedite our tunnel out process. We don't have a huge win con to go for. Six stages, I would say, could be the result that Zaka might be aiming for, but of course Sokka is a psycho sometimes and does go for more. We're not even going for the tunnel out here. We're just gonna try to get uh, this survivor uh, Khan over here, trying to get another hook. 
<laughs> Zaka is a psycho sometimes. This is a quote I will write in my copybook for casting. Zaka is a psycho sometimes. But it's so true because he's playing out of his mind and he's playing so much higher than the standards we're seeing. However, Zero Practice kind of keeping up with it and he's doing it again. He doesn't have enough yet. Good Khan being down here. Second stage on one generator completed is not enough. Therefore, it's now going to be two gens on one stage. There's always the danger when you go for a slug play and when you try to go for more and more pressure that there is the payback you will have to receive. Zaka therefore needs to be careful to not overcommit and not to overextend these chases across the survivor team. At some point he will have to come back and go for the book stages. However, we do see him teleporting left and right even more, trying to go back towards the survivor that we've dropped on the floor and Good Khan will now eventually be found. However, this was quite some downtime without any significant injury and there's the price you pay for that third generator already. And this is now looking strong by the survivor team here. Good count. Two minutes of hang time. No one you need to worry about in terms of being tunneled out anytime soon. And therefore, zero practice slowly potentially sniffing the chance of making a turnaround here. However, you talked about it earlier mid-game. It's very, very important when you're trying to put up the pressure. So what we really need is that the next survivor zero practice that they're going to chase needs to have a long run basically across the entire Midwich Elementary School without going down too early. They are going for a full reset here. That is going to be a clear sign that they want to not sacrifice the efficiency on the generator in terms for the pressure and the safety. Therefore, they are going to reset and get this generator number four coming out here. I don't know how Zero Practice is doing it, but to me it looks like they had a lot of practice. Mm-hmm. They have a little bit more than just zero practice. We do know that this was their killer pick, so they probably did practice a whole lot. However, we do see the spread of the gens right here is a three gen, and we do have eruption on Zaka. There are four survivors still alive in this trial, however, so we'll have to see how both these very good teams play in this certain scenario. We did see Khan go to struggle, so we have three stages and one person on a tunnel out. Zaka is trying to bait them into going for the save, but they don't fall for it just yet. They might try to... Oh, we do see Adam over here. Gets a stun right there, does not give a tag. Zaka does have Sloppy Butcher, so that's very important because resets do take a long time. We're trying not to give even an inch, although it seems that Khan right here might be dying, putting them in the 3v1 with a 3 gen with eruption on the killer. That could be really hard to go against. Adam right here is definitely going to go in, but it is a one for one, meaning we don't leave this 3 gen scenario. And eruption does proc on that generator right there, giving it a little bit more of regression. We're going to throw Adam up here in the middle of the 3 gen again. Will Zero Prac be able to break it? We don't know where the other two survivors are. That is Adam going into struggle. We don't want to give too many other health states because one more health state. Uh, I can't remember how many stages were last game. It was four or five. It was one of them being a fresh hook. So that's why I believe Adam went in for the save. They don't want to give any more freshes to let Sokka actually get to that win con. We have so much progress on this generator right here. Ace is trying to keep a healthy distance to not give a free tag. Ooh, we're right here trying to bait Ace into going in, but he doesn't give any hit for free. No, they're playing this so very well. Is there a pallet here? It has been thrown in and it's broken. We're going to give a tag. That's a sloppy butcher hit, meaning that if they want to be reset, it's going to take a long time. Sokka actually wants to commit to this as well, possibly giving up his three gen scenario, but it does not seem that we have too many other stages left to give for zero prep. They need insane chases. They need to not give anything else. There's three survivors out there possibly being able to get the last generator done. Ace needs to play out of his mind. There's a body block hit coming in. Do they get out of the room, though? They don't get that too much of distance. They are running. Zaka is actually going to be going back into his... 3 gen here, but the survivor is caught out. There's no more resources nearby. This will be triggering eruption as well. And he goes down, and there's a survivor as well. We see them because eruption also shows your aura. We know where everybody is. Two survivors ran away, and we have another survivor right here. They're all injured. This could be a really bad situation for the survivors. We're going to take this hook as well. Khan did go to struggle. Put him right here in the middle of the 3 gen. Doesn't matter, though, because he is dead. 
Ai, ai, ai. I think that's a good summary of the situation that is happening here right now because we do have a little bit too many injuries right now and we have a little bit too much pressure on the shoulders of the survivor team here. They are trying their hardest and they are trying their best. They are trying to get as many generators out of the way as possible here. But uh, we will need a little bit more for that. That's going to be five stages at the moment here. And um, that's what we need to work with. And basically, all we can hope for is that zero practice doesn't give too much right here. But honestly, Zaka already on the next uh, survivor. So you would confirm it very clean with hook stage number six very, very soon here. It was a very... Oh! <laughs> disgusting on Sayahoga's screen. But with that, it's also coming through here. We do have the next hook stage and that's going to be hook stage number six and therefore it's going to be the confirmation that eternal will take the second set point in this best of three it has been a clean series by them a clean run i don't want to say just as we expected by team eternal but Let's be honest, just like as we expected <laughs> from Team Eternal when we are playing Dredge and especially the Blight in the first one. Dominant as always, great organization within the team, great coordinative gameplay. And I do feel like it would be only fair, however, if Zero Practice's Survivor team will take some stages out of the door here. They would really deserve it for the great fight they have shown us today here. Ray, looking on to Eternal and Season 9, do you think they are back on the absolute pole position where they just take everything and won't be stopped? Or did you see something today where you say, this is the potential where another team can jump in? Well, I mean, Eternal played so very well, so very organized. We did see them playing very slow and methodical from both their killer and from their survivor. They are definitely a formidable opponent that teams should be focusing up when they play against them. They better lock in. Zero Prac able to keep up like a very good fight against this team is very wonderful to see. However, we know Eternal's past and how they do tend to win games quite a lot. So we will definitely have to keep an eye on them. We'd love to see Eternal play. We'd love to see their organization. And we will definitely, I believe, be able to see them in the very later stages of the game. Very well played to both sides. We'd love to see your matchups today. And thank you for having me, Dyer. It was a great time. Yeah, we are saying goodbye to Royaxium, ladies and gentlemen, and we are also saying goodbye to myself. <laughs> that was the weirdest sentence I ever dropped. Um, yeah, this was really weird. I don't know how to continue. Let's switch real quick. Actor and Spectral will take the upcoming game. Two very, very lovely casters. Um, Spectral had the debut last weekend, immediately joining us back on the desk in actor, one of the, you could already say, oh geez, one of the pros, one of the old man in business who knows exactly what's going on in the DBD league. And they have an absolute banger match on their hands. Elysium facing Trauma. Elysium, a legendary team that was on the peak of competitive DBD very, very long. And they still are now a little bit back in the fight with Eternal and Trauma, the good old legends. Everyone who is longer in competitive DBD BD for more than two years, I would say, knows exactly what they have to expect when we are talking about team trauma, significant strategies, great fighting, but Actor and Spectral will be able to tell you all of that in a short campfire chat themselves. However, Ray, you said thank you to everyone. I would like to say thank you as well. And ladies and gentlemen, Ray is also streaming. Ray, tell us where people can find you. Oh my gosh, I mean, you can find me, <laughs> you can find me on Twitch, of course, on YouTube, just Rayoxium, that's the clean handle, no underscores, no numbers, you can find me there if you do, do wish, I do a lot of killer gaming, you know, I got a lot of knowledge for sure, mm -hmm, indeed, thank you so much for having me here, and thank you to the staff in the background for running things and keeping it going smoothly and quickly, we love to see that in some uh, comp communities, Thank you all so much. And thank you for having me, Dyer. I will see you guys tomorrow because I will be casting once again.